Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. So the Oculus Rift consumer version came out a couple of weeks ago. We got our hands on it. And what we're going to do in this video is make a compact, powerful PC capable enough to really uh, put the Oculus Rift through its paces and to give you an excellent VR gaming experience. Now, this is kind of a tricky one. The HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift are going to have very similar parameters in terms of what type of PC is really optimized for both VR platforms. Platform. So what we're going to do is take a look at the uh, computer parts, uh, build a computer, and then test out the VR gaming experience specifically for the Oculus Rift. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. Now the minimum PC specs required for both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift consumer version are pretty much identical. In terms of processor, they say you need something like a Core i5-4590 or equivalent. On the AMD side, something like an FX8350 is definitely a good starting point. In terms of the graphics card, they recommend at least a GTX 970 or an R9-290. Uh, obviously, if you can get something better, the uh, better your VR experience will be. Uh, in terms of uh, RAM, you need at least 8 gigabytes, whether that be DDR4 or DDR3 memory, and uh, the graphics card should be HDMI 1.3 compatible, and you should have uh, two free USB 3.0 ports. Now with that knowledge, here is the parts list for the PC that we'll be making specifically for VR. We're going to be basing everything around the good old-fashioned Core i7 6700K processor. We've used this CPU on many of our builds, and it's one of the best uh, gaming-oriented processors you can get, especially for multi-threaded applications. And since we're going to be overclocking this processor, we're going to use the NZXT Kraken X61. This is one of the best all-in-one liquid coolers that you can get right now. It's going to give us an excellent headroom for all of our overclocking needs. And in terms of the motherboard, we're going to be making a more compact system. So we're using the EVGA Z170 ITX motherboard. This is going to be a very powerful uh, little platform to start out with. It has two DIMMs for DDR4 memory support up to 32 gigabytes it also has excellent solid state capacitors lots of usb 3.0 connections and even an m.2 uh, integration which is definitely going to be good for long-term future proofing in terms of our memory we're going to be using corsair's 16 gigabytes vengeance lpx memory this is clocked around 3000 megahertz the frequency on the memory is not that important and with 16 gigabytes we're well above recommended 8 gigabytes for vr now in terms of storage we're going to be using an SSD drive from Samsung. This is the Evo 850, the 512 gigabyte version. Now for our GP, we're going to be using the PNY version of the GTX 980 Ti. Now we're big fans of the 980 Ti, as I'm sure many of you guys are. Uh, great overall, a dollar value. It gets up to Titan X performance for almost a fraction of the price. So uh, basically, right now, this is probably one of the best GPUs, especially for high resolution gaming and indeed a VR. Now we're also going to be doing a little bit of overclocking on our 980 Ti. So we're actually going to water cool it using uh, the NZXT Kraken G10 adapter and this uh, basically allows you to water cool any of your modern GPUs. We're going to be using the Corsair H105 a dual 120 millimeter all-in-one water cooler and with this water cooled setup we can really push the limits of this specific graphics card. For the PSU we're going to be using the trusty EVGA 750 watt 80 plus bronze certified half modular power supply and for the case we're going to use something really unique and cool looking that is the NZXT Manta. This is obviously an ITX uh, chassis, which is again uh, not the smallest uh, chassis in the world, but definitely going to be a little bit portable and looks very unique for all these premium parts. Big fan of the reinforced steel curve panels, very rigidly built and over engineered, and uh, really easy to build with as well. And it supports two uh, 200 millimeter radiators, which is going to be perfect for all the water cooling that's going to be set up into this thing. Now, in terms of price. Again, the grand total will always vary depending upon where you are in the world and what time you're buying each component. But for the system itself, not including the OS, you're looking at $1776 plus the $650 for the Oculus Rift. If you go with the HTC Vive, it's around $830. So as you can see, this system isn't specifically with any kind of budget in mind, and it's certainly a little bit pricey in both scenarios. You're well over $2,000 with 
the VR headset. And of course, you can make a VR compatible PC for under $1,000. And uh, perhaps we'll do a video on uh, that kind of build in the future. In terms of building the system, we've done uh, dozens of build guides this year. I'm sure you guys know how to build a PC. So I'm not going to patronize you by going through all the detailed steps. You already know how to basically build a PC by now. And if you haven't, definitely check out our channel. But basically, uh, building with the Manta is really simple and straightforward. Uh, with an ITX uh, motherboard, uh, everything works exactly the same as a regular motherboard. Everything is just more smaller and more compact. And I'm a huge fan of the Manta because it's really easy to work with. You have tons of cable management. And even with our two 200mm uh, radiators for both our CPU and our GPU, there's plenty of room to fit everything in very comfortably and to set up everything properly as well. Now, we've done a dedicated video on how to actually install uh, the uh, Kraken G10 water cooling adapter for your graphics card. And uh, you'll uh, either want to click on this uh, card right now to go to that video, or uh, that video will be in the description down below for more detailed information. But it's pretty simple and straightforward as you can see over here. And here we have the PC all built, looks awesome. And uh, now we're going to just get into uh, how I set up the overclock. So basically on uh, the 6700K, we set it to 4.8 gigahertz and that's with a voltage rating about 1.35 volts and with our NZXT X61 cooler uh, our load temperatures are very reasonable uh, hover around 71 degrees Celsius which is uh, pretty safe and uh, stable at these specific settings you could push it a little bit further if you want but I'm comfortable right now in terms of our GPU our GTX 980 Ti is set to over 1500 megahertz in terms of in-game overclock uh, boost frequency and uh, the memory clock is uh, set to around 8 gigahertz and our GPU voltage is set to the maximum of what this PNY GTX 980 Ti can do which is uh, just under 1.2 volts and of course in terms of our load temperatures since this GPU is water cooled using the Corsair 105 with a dual 120 millimeter radiator uh, our temperatures are very very stable at just under 56 degrees C even under full gaming load. Okay, so now let's actually test out this PC to see how it handles different VR uh, games. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is just the synthetic Valve VR benchmark, and this is something that every computer can do, and we're basically getting uh, a score about 11 points with our current configuration, which is very solid, and as you can see, it's uh, more than capable of handling most of VR games that are available right now, both for the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Now, the other benchmarks that we're going to do are specifically for the Oculus Rift consumer version, starting with the exclusive title of Lucky's Tale for the Oculus Rift. And this is pretty much locked at 90 FPS in most regards. So even the minimum and maximum frames based on our measurements is around 90 FPS, even with all the settings turned up to their full maximum details. And with VR, latency is sometimes just as important as high FPS scores. And we get a range of about 12 to 11 milliseconds, which is a very passable. Now moving on to EVE Valkyrie and with our 980 Ti overclocked we get an average uh, frame rate about 90 FPS a minimum of 89 so uh, very very uh, similar to the performance we got with Lucky's Tale and the latency is uh, most of the time under 12 milliseconds so really great performance over here even with all the details up. Continuing forth looking at Kronos again uh, we got a 90 FPS and a minimum of 89 FPS and our response uh, response time or latency was around or just under 13 milliseconds uh, for most of our testing time. The last game is a racing title which is a bit different a little bit more nausea inducing and that is a radial G and here we got a little bit uh, different uh, results 88.1 average uh, frames per second and in terms of our minimum of frames per second we got about uh, 47.8 and the latency was around uh, 13 to 10 milliseconds so pretty good in terms of latency but uh, uh, more vulnerability in terms of our uh, deviations from our FPS ratings and the gameplay for most of the time was uh, pretty smooth and dynamic and you didn't lose the VR presence which is the most important thing. 
But really on that guys, that's really it. As you can see, this PC is certainly capable of most of the VR games that you're gonna experience uh, currently right now. Certainly uh, other games uh, that are gonna come out later on in the future uh, are probably gonna be a lot more demanding and uh, we're probably gonna need faster and faster GPUs and that's what uh, the new generation of graphics cards are gonna have to really deliver is excellent VR gaming experience because you really want the highest frame rate possible uh, above 90 FPS to match the uh, 90 hertz uh, refresh rate on most of these VR headsets and then you want to be ab above the 2k resolution which is the native resolution of most of the modern day VR headsets and we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison in depth between the uh, HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift consumer version to see which one is right for you uh, hopefully that video will come out as soon as we get our hands on the HTC uh, Vive but uh, stay tuned for that video Stay tuned for also a dedicated graphics card comparison between all the popular graphics cards to see what are the minimum specifications or what will work best for a VR platform. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support and we'll see you later. Take care.